Okay, um, I got all the other materials I need, I hope, to uh, complete this well pump install. So I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what else you're gonna need besides the well pump itself. Uh, this is the Echo Worthy 12 volt uh, submersible well pump. That'll cost you between 75 and 85 bucks, depending on the, uh, if there's any active coupons on Amazon. Uh, links for most of the stuff will be in the descriptions. Um, we got a 100 foot 14.3 power cord. Um, wanted to get a basic one without any illuminated uh, heads or anything. My plan for the power cord is to cut off the prong end about five foot and then that will go onto my power board. And then when I want to bring out the power board and fire up the pump, I'll just plug it into the, uh, the female end when I'm ready for it. Um, to connect to the barbed fitting on the well pump, you will need about a foot of half inch um, poly hose. Um, I couldn't find this in less than a 10 foot roll, so I've got nine foot left for another project in the future. Yay. Um, hose clamps as well. And because I want to connect this to PEX, the only way I could figure out to do it was to get a barbed PEX connector. I'm not sure if that's going to show up, but basically it looks like this, but it's brass. And to go along with that, a shark bite half inch NPT to half inch PEX connector. So the barbed connector and the NPT to PEX will get screwed together. I'll do that in a moment. And then we'll just connect the PEX into that after about a one foot span of uh, poly hose. Other things, uh, check valve, half inch check valve for PEX. I uh, got a shark bite brand, about eight, 10 bucks. Most of these fittings are about eight or 10 bucks a piece, depending on where you get them. And in addition to that, I got a butt ton of fuses. I only really need a couple, but I got spares. It was seven bucks on Amazon. Uh, per the manual, it recommends a 7.5 amp fuse um, connected to your pump. On my power board, I have a 7.5 amp going up to the pump and a 15 amp protecting the battery. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to whoever made their manual. I didn't even read it at first because I'm so used to getting manuals that suck. This manual is actually pretty good. Um, got some good details in there. All right, I'm gonna start um, putting things together. All right, a quick correction. Uh, when I reviewed my last clip there, I noticed I called that half inch barb connector a half inch barb to PEX. That is half inch barb to half inch male NPT. And the PEX connector is half inch PEX to a half inch female NPT. As you can see, I have stuck the two together and that'll get stuck in the uh, end of the hose. Uh, one other item that I forgot to mention is you're going to need some heat shrink tubing for the wire that is going to be underwater. Um, just finished um, attaching about five feet of that extension cord to my power converter here. Uh, what this is, it takes a cobalt 40 volt battery input that is running the straight 40 volts through these two 12 gauge wires up to this block. It goes first to a on off switch then loops through, goes to a 15 amp fuse. There is one more space available should I want to put a, uh, a float switch or something in there. It then runs at 40 volts into a buck converter. This will take anything from 8 volts to 40 volts DC and convert it to 13.8 volts DC, which is coming out over here. I have a 7.5 amp fuse there to protect this box, a 15 amp fuse to protect the battery. And then I get my 13.8 volts coming down here, which will connect into the pump, basically by plugging this into the other end of the cord, which will be stuck to the pump. Um, also on the setup, white is positive. I have to remind myself of that because uh, I do house wiring mainly, and white isn't supposed to be positive in my world. But I'm going to go and I'm going to start uh, wiring up the pump now. And then we're going to give it a test to make sure that this battery will still power it with the addition of 100 feet of extension cord. And make, give it the bucket test first, and then we'll uh, start doing the plumbing. Hey, well if you're like me and you managed to make it about 60 years without uh, ever having to use heat shrink tape, 
Um, practice on something first. Wife's hair dryer? Nah, didn't work. Um, ended up having to use a cigarette lighter, so heat shrink the two wires of matter. Electrical taped the crap out of that. Ran a uh, full tube over it. Electrical taped the crap over that. Ran another full tube over it. And, and I'm about to electrical tape the crap over that one too. I'm pretty sure I got it watertight. Tried to use butt connectors. Fail. Because uh, <laughs> I had two dissimilar sized wires and they weren't going to stick in the same butt connector. So basically it's just spliced in there. Electrical tape. Heat shrink. Heat shrink. Electrical tape. You get the point. I've been spending the last 20 minutes screwing with that, but all right, moving on. All right, we got success. I'm doing another bucket test here. We are running through the full coil of 100 feet of wire, and uh, using the cobalt battery board there. That was my main concern was. Uh, if this was still going to function with the uh, added resistance of having a hundred feet of wire there, see it's just plugged in right from the board, and um, with just as much pressure as we had before. So I'm just going to slap that uh, piece of pipe on the top there, and it's getting kind of late. So tomorrow I'm going to drop this thing down the well. All right, that's all I got for you for today. I'm going to stitch this video together. And uh, tomorrow I'll be making a new video on uh, dropping this thing down the well. That's the only thing left to do is drain my bucket here. Alright, we'll see you all tomorrow. And I'll be uh, dropping this thing down the well about 75 feet. Y'all have yourselves a great night.